Hey everybody, it's Sean here again, back for another journal entry. I believe this will be entry number three, episode number three, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, this has been really experimental so far. It may change, the format may change once I get into this and get used to it. If you're tuning in for the first time, so what I'm doing is a series. It's kind of a daily journal about how I deal with depression and anxiety. This is not about sympathy or a pity party or anything like that for myself. What this is for is to help anybody out there that might be dealing with the same thing and maybe can use this as a tool or a resource that could help them you know that's kind of the ultimate goal here and if you know if no one watches this at least maybe it'll benefit me coming back and looking at this on down the road so right now i just got home from work a little while ago had dinner i am getting ready to go to rehearsal for worship band it's at eight o'clock and I wanted to kind of talk about my approach to that sort of stuff. I know, so I, my friend Zach, Zach, if you're watching this, I apologize for uh, <laughs> for calling you out in this. Uh, it's not a bad thing, I promise. Uh, my friend Zach, he's a musician as well, and he talks about, like we've talked about before, as someone that deals with depression, anxiety, stage fright. I guess it's something that you can get used to, it's something that you feel every time, but some cope with it better than others. And uh, also, if you uh, watch any of my other videos, I have some. I have to have something that I'm fidgeting with. Uh, this is a Lego keychain. I have to have something to fidget with while I talk on these videos. And then, if you watch my first video, I brought up a little bit about masking, and I want to kind of talk a little bit more about that. Going to church, you know, I grew up in church, and I've so I've been very used to it. And obviously, I was on the autism spectrum. I've been on it my whole life. I didn't know. I mean, nobody knew for the longest time. And then I remember when I was in like seventh grade, I got diagnosed with chronic fatigue. At the time, yet again, I didn't realize that it was as a result of autistic burnout or social burnout that was causing me chronic fatigue and I've dealt with that pretty much since I was in seventh grade and uh, only now in the last five to ten years did it really did I really put all the pieces together about being on the autism spectrum my whole life and dealing with depression and anxiety so many events I can think back of as a kid even up through college that make so much more sense like why they affected me the way they did because of now seeing through um, this awakened lens I, I know now that it was you know anxiety and depression you guys I have a when I'm doing this I'm just going off the cuff I don't have any notes in front of me just kind of pouring my heart and mind out each time some of this may be circular cyclical whatever you want to call it, but I'm going to keep returning back to my main point. My main point is this. I'm getting ready to go to worship rehearsal. I'm going to try and take some footage. Uh, while I'm there, part of the anxiety part of me it has been afraid to do videos like this. I like to do, right now I'm in a room alone, in my house alone, because uh, my wife took the kids up to Wednesday night church. They have stuff there for the kids on Wednesday night, so... Um, she took them up there for that. And this time, usually, I have to mentally prepare for going to rehearsal. I have to pre-process everything in my mind the way that I think it should go. Now, I want to give a shout out to everybody on the team, everybody on our team, the worship team and the tech team. They're all great. They really help me be more myself. But I've done the masking thing for so long 
and I can't remember if I mentioned it in this video, but masking, you're almost just pretending to be okay. That's the best way I can say it. You're pretending to be okay and you're doing it for the sake of others so that they don't feel uncomfortable. Um, if I, you know, interacted with people with no mask, I will say there are a couple people, a very few, not counting my wife, there are very, very, very few amount of people that I will be with in a social setting unmasked. Masking is just something I've done. It, I didn't realize it for a long time, but anytime I'm in a social situation, I'm masking, pretending to be okay, almost to the point of pretending to be another person. And so the me, the Sean that most people know isn't really me. I know that sounds like cliche and like, I don't know how it sounds, but that's the truth. And it takes me a long time to reach a level of someone that I can, can be around them without masking. I have to mentally prepare, I've been doing that. Here I gotta leave in like 20 minutes to go. So I listen to the songs that we're gonna be practicing at rehearsal. But I also have to kind of get in my, like, meditate and kind of get into this zone of being okay um, before I show up and be around a lot of people. And playing drums, playing drums is so, you're so exposed. Like, one wrong thing and maybe to the untrained ear, you can get by. But uh, like I said, I'm overly critical of myself. I don't demand perfection of myself. I try to, but you know, a lot of times my brain tricks me while I'm playing songs that we've played, you know, 50 times. I'll just randomly forget how the next part goes because my brain likes to keep me on my toes. That just happens sometimes, but yeah, I have to prepare for the music, but more what I prepare for is the social interaction. Like, I have pre-programmed responses to people, what they're going to say. Just for, just for an experiment here, and I don't know if I'm going to, like I said, I kind of chicken out. I tried to do one of these before where I go take a video of us doing rehearsal and stuff. I filmed part of it, and then I just chickened out. Uh, my anxiety got the best of me, and I couldn't. I, I've, I'm already realizing how I've got off uh, of what I was talking about earlier about I'm in this room by myself right now. It's easy for me to do this here. It's difficult for me to set up my camera like when people look at me. I don't know, there's just this awkwardness I feel about doing it and the guy that inspired me, actually he inspired me to start vlogging five years ago is Austin Augie. And in my first video, I mentioned uh, that he was my inspiration for doing this, like, video journal. And uh, he's he's an extrovert. He deals with some ADHD, I think, and some anxiety, but he's more extroverted, and he can just go out in the middle. He lives in New York. He can just walk the streets with his camera on, and he doesn't feel any kind of shame. Like, not that he anything he does is bad. I'm just saying, like, I feel this awkwardness, like a shame almost. It's hard to describe. So I'm hoping that I can go through with it and take take some footage at rehearsal tonight for this video and I'll recap it later. When I get back, I'll, uh, I'll talk about how it went. But anyway, I'm rehearsing before rehearsal. I'm rehearsing what my responses are gonna be when anybody talks to me because I have these auto pre-programmed responses. There are very few people, like I said, that I will genuinely tell people um, what I'm dealing with. So anyway, hopefully the footage will be good. You know, it's hard to take footage of drums without like clipping the mic. This is a nice microphone, but it just struggles sometimes with really loud, like live concerts and drums and all that. I've tried to do videos in the past and it just didn't work out. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Getting ready to head to rehearsal. I'm gonna listen to the songs a couple more times to get them embedded in my mind. Uh, my actual drum set is is up at the building so like I don't get to practice so I just kind of mentally practice and that way I can sit down and, and just play. I guess we'll see what happens so stay tuned. 
All right, made it up here to the church parking lot. The thing that's crazy to me is how, uh, I mean, it's October now, but you know, a couple months ago, it was still daylight when I would get here at eight o'clock. So, if, uh, hopefully this doesn't turn out super grainy. Shooting in 4K on my phone. But, uh, we're about to go into the green room entrance back of the church. Jess is taking care of me. She's the MVP. Hi, Pat. Yeah, it's got my important notes and all that good stuff. My SJC custom kit. I've had it up here for a little over a year. I didn't play last week, so now I gotta adjust it back to where I usually keep everything. Hey, so um, we're back, um, back in the studio from rehearsal, and uh, um, there's not a whole lot to say, really. I was able to cover a decent amount, and I know this video is already getting long, so I don't want to drag it out like a whole lot more. The only thing I was going to say is, so they kind of tricked me. So typically when we do rehearsal, we play through each song one time like to kind of make sure we have all the parts nailed down. So we play through them individually with some space in between and some conversation and adjustments to our mix and stuff. And then we play the entire set all the way through. Well this time, um, we played through all the songs and then I think we did Gyra twice. Then 
when I thought we were going to be playing all of the songs through again, we only did the opener, which was Seek First. Um, we only did that one again and then rehearsal was over. So that's why, um, and I don't know how much of it I'm going to show in this video. That's why there wasn't as much video of the full band doing the rehearsal. So yeah, overall it went fairly well. All that being said, uh, I've been editing these videos several days after, so I think I'm probably going to do this after Sunday, and so if that's the case, I'm going to use footage from our Facebook Live video and show you the end result. So you saw the before of rehearsal, so here is how it ended up on Sunday morning. Thanks for watching.